during the debates, while she's on national television, everything that Elizabeth Warren says about Medicare for All, it's perfect. It's absolutely excellent. Her rhetoric is on point. She assures us that she wants to get rid of private. She supports single payer. And everything she says is music to my ears. But whenever she exits the debate stage, when she's on the campaign trail, when less people are watching, she doesn't sound as uh, confident in her support for Medicare for All. Right now, what we've got in Medicare for All is a framework, and it doesn't have the details, and you're right to be asking. But the most important part of your asking is to, is to raise awareness so we get this right as we go through it. What she said there was a lie. It was a bold-faced lie. She said, right now, what we've got in Medicare for All is a framework, and it doesn't have the details. That's not true. That is a lie. Medicare for All is a highly detailed piece of legislation that has been introduced in the House and the Senate. And it has existed now for years. Maybe she meant, look, I don't have my own version of Medicare for All. I just have a framework. But if you are the person who's got a plan for everything, that's still not a very good defense. So at a minimum, she was talking about her own health care plan. But, you know, the problem is when you say Medicare for All is just a framework, you're saying it's not this fully fleshed out idea. It's just a goal. No, it is a policy, Liz. How do you not get this? And by saying that, you're spreading misinformation. So that's what she says about Medicare for All, just in general. I don't know if she's talking about Bernie's bill or her bill, but I mean, just getting her to agree that she supports Medicare for All in and of itself is difficult because once the cameras cut, after a debate, for example, this is what she was saying when asked when she would release her own health care plan. When are we going to see your plan on health care? Are you going to so, have your own plan? I, I, we, I support Medicare for all. Um, I think this is a good plan. And look, I support a lot of plans. Other things that people have come up with when they're good plans, let's do it. This isn't some kind of contest. I got to think of mine first. It's what's best for the American people. Actually, it's quite literally a contest. So what are you saying? And understand why that's problematic. She supports Medicare for all, but look, you know, um, everyone has good plans. So, um, you know, if uh, there are good plans, then let's do it. Meaning if somebody else like Michael Bennett proposes something that's not Medicare for all, let's do that instead. That's what I hear when she says something like that. And just stop for a moment and consider this question. Does that sound like someone who's going to fight for Medicare for all? I mean, the fact that we're even entertaining whether or not anyone else truly supports single-payer Medicare for all at this point is a joke. There's one candidate who has not wavered on Medicare for all. It's Bernie Sanders. Watching her say that right there, that tells me everything I need to know. She is not truly going to support Medicare for all. And when it comes to Medicare for all, another reason why I don't think she actually would fight for it is because getting her to just admit to basic details about single payer is like pulling teeth. One of the most basic aspects of a single payer type system is you raise taxes to pay for a single payer national healthcare system. She can barely admit to that. So, so what I want to get is, I want to get insurance, insurance that covers everybody. everybody. I don't tax anybody. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make this harder on your family. I just want it to cover all the families. And, and to the extent, extent that the unions have negotiated, this has been part of their entire pay package, then the unions need to be made whole. Listen, under a single payer system, we raise taxes and that's how we fund healthcare. You can explain it. You can say, look, overall, you will net save money because we eliminate copays, deductibles, monthly premiums. So overall, everyone will net save money. You can explain it that way. But to not admit a basic fact that it doesn't raise taxes tells me that maybe single payer isn't actually what you want because you refuse to describe it. Now, in an interview with Colbert, I can't play the clip because it's CBS and they would copyright strike this video. She couldn't admit that we'd raise taxes to fund single payer. And it is incredibly frustrating. And she said, look, I want insurance that covers everybody. I don't want to tax anybody. I'm not trying to make this harder on your family. Just saying that is problematic because you are suggesting that a tax for Medicare for all would harm people. No, it would save people money. If you make less than $29,000 per year, you do not see a tax increase. If you make above that, you will see a tax increase for Medicare for All, but we eliminate copays, deductibles, monthly insurance premiums, and you have more money. So if you spend 20 grand a year on health insurance under Medicare for All, you're gonna be spending 15 or 10. 
That's the difference. Now, she did clarify later, and I think she gave a better answer because she was so uh, vague there. Somebody had to follow up, but here's what she said. No, it was talking about taxing her Cadillac healthcare plan that she had asked me about. Look, uh, I think what you're asking about is Medicare for all, and um, I'm pretty clear on this. Uh, rich people and big corporations are going to see their costs go up. But middle class families are going to see their costs go down. And that's how it should be. I spent a big part of my life studying why families go broke. And too often, it's around health care. And it's health care even for people who have health insurance. Uh, we need to change that in America, and I think we can. So first of all, you're not clear on this. You have never been clear on the issue of Medicare for All, with the exception of your performance at the debates. But once those cameras are off and not everyone is watching, that's when you start getting more wishy-washy. And her answer there was better, but the fact that every time she talks about healthcare and Medicare for All, we need some sort of clarification. It just goes to show you that she's not the real deal. And here's the thing, after months of championing herself as being the candidate that has a plan for everything, she only just released a plan for healthcare on her website a couple of weeks ago, and nowhere in that proposal does it explicitly say the words single payer. Now, you may think that I'm just being nitpicky, but that actually does matter at a time when other politicians like Kamala Harris, they're calling their plan Medicare for all or Medicare blank, and they're trying to suggest that their plans are comparable to Bernie's when in fact, they're not. So for her to say single payer, that tells us exactly what she supports. No mention of that, but on top of that, when it comes to mental health care, this is free at the point of service under Bernie Sanders' proposal, but under her plan, she doesn't say anything. There's a specific little exception that she carved out for mental health care where she talks about affordable mental health and, quote, holding insurers accountable, which means in her version of Medicare for All, it's not going to be as comprehensive as Bernie's because she is explicitly choosing to leave out mental health. Now, why she's choosing to do this, I don't know. But even if she supports Medicare for All, she's saying my version isn't as robust as Bernie's version. Now, she raised her hand at the debate, rightfully so, and said, I want to get rid of private insurance. Now, the reason why Medicare for All gets rid of private insurance is because it offers comprehensive benefits, but also bans duplicative care. What she's doing here is she is making her own version of Medicare for All skimpier in order to preserve a role for these private insurance companies. Because if you say, we're not going to cover mental health, we're going to leave that out, not only is that less important to you, that's what that tells me, but also you are saying there's going to be this whole market for mental health insurance when mental health care is health care. There should be no exception. So basically, the overall conclusion after showing you clip after clip of her backtracking on Medicare for All or being vague intentionally so, I think, the conclusion is evident. Elizabeth Warren is not to be trusted when it comes to the issue of Medicare for All, because we have no idea what will actually be codified into law when she's elected. She's saying now she supports Medicare for All, and that's better than Hillary, I guess, but I mean, that was a really low bar. Most people are better than Hillary Clinton. John Delaney is at least to the left of Hillary Clinton when it comes to healthcare. So for Elizabeth Warren to say, I support Medicare for All, but I mean, if somebody else has a better plan, Medicare for America, Medicare Choice, I'll go with that. That's not giving me the confidence that you're going to push for and fight for a policy that is incredibly important to me. And here's the thing. If you're elected as president and you truly want Medicare for all, you need to go in guns blazing because the health insurance industry is going to try to end your career. So to already show your willingness to capitulate, that tells me we're not getting Medicare for all if we get an Elizabeth Warren president. Your rhetoric may be nice at the debates, but after the debates, I still need you to remain committed. And you're not. Now, Anna Kasparian of TYT wrote an op-ed for The Hill that basically expressed everything that I'm thinking when it comes to Elizabeth Warren. She writes, Candidates shouldn't get away with slapping the Medicare for All label on whatever they want to co-opt the popularity of Bernie's plan. Voters aren't stupid, and progressives in particular are paying close attention to each candidate's rhetoric on the campaign trail. Labeling a non-single-payer healthcare plan as Medicare for All is like slanging a pair of Adidas sneakers as if they're the real thing. For those who don't think wavering on Medicare for All is all that important, consider what her backpedaling represents. It represents dishonor 
dishonesty and the willingness to pretend to support policy because it's popular with the intention to compromise and concede later. It's become abundantly clear that there is simply one candidate who will aggressively fight for the legislation, and it's Bernie Sanders, the man who wrote the damn bill. That is exactly right. Healthcare is the number one issue for a lot of voters. So if you truly, deeply want a Medicare for all, single payer system with no private insurance, you know who to vote for. It's not Elizabeth Warren. It's not Andrew Yang. It's not Tulsi Gabbard. It's not Marianne Williamson. The one person who has been consistent is Bernie Sanders. So if you want Medicare for all, single payer, you vote Bernie. Otherwise, you're getting someone, a different candidate, who doesn't support it truly. Because, I mean, all we need is, like, one red flag. And that's that's enough. That tells you all you need to know, that they're willing to cave. Anytime you show even the just smallest semblance that you're willing to capitulate, you're done. I have no interest in you because I want Medicare for All. And if you're talking about something that's not single-payer Medicare for All, then I know that you're not going to fight for it when you're elected. So it's a damn shame because Elizabeth Warren could really be a leader here. She's surging in the polls, but she's doing it by essentially deceiving voters. And I absolutely think that that is morally reprehensible. Shame on Elizabeth Warren. She really has the nerve to call herself the candidate with a plan for everything when she's been so wishy-washy on Medicare for All. Pick a lane and stay in it. But what we're seeing now with all of this wavering and wishy-washiness, all it tells me is that we're not getting Medicare for All unless we get a Bernie Sanders president. And that's a sad fact because we shouldn't have the weight of one policy be on the back of one candidate. But that's where we're at. It's Bernie or no Medicare for All. It's as simple as that. Liz isn't going to do it. Tulsi isn't going to do it. It's going to be Bernie. He's the one person who's going to fight for it. And maybe he's not going to be successful. Maybe he loses this fight. But what I know for damn sure is he's at least going to fight for it. And that's really, really important.